Velocicoaster officially opened at Islands of Adventure on June 10th, but I was lucky enough to ride it before that day. My name is Drew Hastings, and let's talk about Velocicoaster, cause I have some things I want to say about it. So most of the time I start with a the theming, and I kind of will for this one, but before you even get to the ride, you can see it when you enter the park. If you would just walk straight ahead in the port of entry, you see it there the big Velocicoaster in the background. You can especially see that top hat, and then you can see some of the parts that go over that bridge. And if you hang a right at the port of entry, that's probably the most direct way to get to Velocicoaster. So you keep following that path around through Seuss Landing and whatever else there is over there, Harry Potter. But then once you're in the Jurassic World area of the park, if you just keep following that main path, you'll eventually see the sign that says Jurassic World, and it has an arrow pointing to that offshoot of the path. That offshoot isn't the only way to get in there. You can also go through the Discovery Center if you wanted to, but that Discovery Center has kind of become the gift shop. But if you really wanted to, I mean, you could, you might be able to avoid some of the crowds that way. I don't know, but it, I guess it depends on how backed up the line is or could be. Although from my experience, it seems like they have good queuing for that ride. Anyways, if you take that main path that I talked about with the sign pointing to the left, you will walk under part of Velocicoaster. So you walk under the um, Twisted Airtime Hill, I guess, and you also walk under the Zero-G stall. So you keep following that path, and on your right you'll see the Discovery Center, but on your left you will see the big drop with the top hat, and you can also kind of see the Heartline roll over the water, which is such a cool sight to see and it's amazing. <laughs> I'll get into that in a second. So in front of you, they have the big Velocicoaster sign, and there's a big tunnel, and I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't quite fit with the theming of the Discovery Center. It's just a juxtaposition of the old versus the new, which is not necessarily terrible. I like the theme of Jurassic World. I like the modern industrial look that they go for, but it doesn't quite match the older style of that building little bit of a gripe, but it's okay. I can live with that. And this tunnel that you walk into is super cool. It goes along with that modern industrial look, but they have a bunch of multicolored lights, and off in front of you, kind of in the distance, as you get closer to it, you'll see it better, but they have a Velocicoaster sculpture. So it's like they have four, the four different raptors there, and there's also a little train going over that top hat in the sculpture. That's pretty cool, but they have music and it's synced up to like a light show that they do. So there's lights on the ceiling and then the lights that go all along the wall, they're all synced up to the music. So you see like light shows and then there's also two TV screens there and that's where Mr. Dino DNA comes in and he will give you some of the introductory spiel that introduces the story of the ride. I'm gonna be honest, I missed a large part of the queue because I rode this ride two times and both of those times I did the single rider line and I was able to ride it in like 30 minutes or less, which is really good for a brand new coaster. But that does mean that I missed out on some of the queue and the theming. So if you really want to see that, they do have queue walkthroughs. Just go watch one of those. I hear that it's pretty cool and next time I'm there, I hope to actually get to do the full queue just to go see everything that there is to see in that queue. But I did the single rider line, which is okay. It allowed me to get on the ride faster, and I'm okay with that. So, in, at least in the single rider line, you go through the metal detection after you're in the room with the light show, and then you go through metal detection and lockers, and I'll take you up some stairs, and this is the final pre-show before you get on the ride. And this pre-show has Claire, whatever her name is, and also Owen Grady or something like that. Um, Chris Pratt. It's Chris Pratt and the um, owner and operator of the park, whatever her name is, Claire or something. Those two give a spiel. Chris Pratt says, no, don't do it. This is a stupid idea. And she's like, oh, it's a great idea. Ignore him. So then after that show, you make your way to the station and then you finally get on the ride. It's the most anticipated moment. Oh, it's so good. One thing that is cool to see is that as the trains come back into the station, 
the cast members start clapping, so then everyone on the train starts clapping. At first I couldn't figure out what was going on, but then after I wrote it and I saw them clapping, I was like, oh, okay. So everyone's clapping when they get off the train and they're like, woo, this was great, and it is great. But then you get on the ride and you pull down the restraints. I didn't think the restraints were anything terrible. They're lap bar restraints, so it's not like big bulky over the shoulder. They don't add to or take away from the ride, I think. They're just kind of there. So now we're on the ride. Restraints are checked, they're locked. They give us the thumbs up. We are rolling out of the station. And you do kind of roll out of the station and it'll take you into the paddock area. This is where you see the cages that the velociraptors are in. And so what's really cool, it doesn't show it in the official POV, but the trains kind of back up a little bit and they're just like moving around with the velociraptors and then you see the velociraptors fly past you and then that is when you launch for the first time. And I just have to say, every element on this ride is absolutely amazing. So there's like two major parts of the ride. There's the first launch and after that, and then there's the second launch and after that. And the first launch is really interesting. A lot of people thought that there would be poor pacing in this section. It is not poorly paced. But what is good about this first section is the rock work. They went hard on the rock work. So you're constantly diving in and out of the rock work. And you also see velociraptors that are right there and you fly right past them and they make noise and you're like, ah, just like that. So let's go back to the actual ride layout. So you're on the launch and it'll take you up into a big overbanked turn. And after that, you dive through some rock work. It's like circular and you're diving through it and you're it's a great head chopper effect, and that takes you into a dive loop. Now this dive loop, it doesn't flip you until you're at like the very top, so it's a very whippy loop. Super fun. And I don't exactly remember what happens from there. But it's cool, it's fun. <laughs> now I'll probably look at the POV and then tell you. Okay, I figured out what happens next. So you go into a right banked turn and that'll take you into an airtime hill and then that is followed by a left banked turn and all the airtime hills and everything on this provide spectacular airtime this is you are out of your seat for a lot of this ride it really just pops you out which is so great the rest of this section you are kind of just doing a bunch of different banked turns and you're zooming by the rock work and also by velocicoasters at one point it does like an S bend, but you're going down a slope, and that's super fun. And there's a velociraptor right there. If I remember right, you do see all four of the different velociraptors in this section of the ride. Um, and then while you're on the ride, before you go into that second launch, you do a bit of an outer banked turn, which is super fun. This might be a slower moment on the ride, if I'm being quite honest. There's pacing on this like one element isn't as good, but that takes you straight into the second launch, so you're back up to speed. Just ignore it, the ride is great, it makes up for it, trust me. So you take the second launch, and from what I've heard, you can see it in the queue, wink wink, but you go up into the big top hat. And this is a really fun moment, and it's probably gonna be the scariest moment for a lot of people riding this ride, GP especially, because you go from ground level to way up high, and then you slow down right near the top, and then you go over that big drop. And the drop is pretty fun. It's not anything spectacular. I just think it's a fun element and it's nice to see that big elevation change. That's the highlight of this part of the ride is probably the big elevation change. And then it also is a really nice visual for the ride. So then as you're coming down off this huge top hat, the first element that you go into is a zero G stall. This is the first one I've ever been on personally, but what I thought was most impressive about it, while the stall itself was fun, what I thought was even more fun was the whippiness going into it. You are whipped to the left, hang upside down for a second or two, and then you are whipped back out of it in the same direction. Following the zero G roll, you go over a wave turn, and this provides some pretty decent airtime. This is over the bridge, and unfortunately I was not able to go on the bridge. It was closed for whatever stupid reason. I would have liked to go on it. But that gives you some pretty decent airtime, and you're on your side, and you're like way high up off the ground, which is super cool. And you keep going around that, and this takes you into the second lap around the bridge. And 
on this you are going over a twisted airtime hill so you start off banking right and then you get to the top of that hill you bank left and then you bank right and continue your turn to the right and this provides some pretty decent airtime and it's like a bit of an outer bank type thing it's super fun next up is your last over the bridge moment and you do a bit of an overbank turn. It, this isn't anything too spectacular, but it's still fun. It keeps up with the pacing. And following this, you go into a little bunny hop airtime hill. And I personally didn't think that there was any airtime from it. I didn't get anything from it. I rode this ride twice. Once was in the fourth row, I think, and the second time was in the second to last row. Um, and neither of those times I thought it was anything spectacular. But what is spectacular is what follows. You do the heartline roll above the water, which in my opinion is the scariest moment on any coaster that I've been on. There, I've seen some scary things and the coasters themselves are scary, but this was like, it pushes you out of your seat towards the water and it's like right there. And it's kind of honestly terrifying to be that close to the water and be hanging upside down. But man, was that fun. Scariest moment, but it's a really great element. And following this, you bank to the right and you go back up into the station but you do a bit of an s-bend double up type thing so you start off banking right and you go up and that takes you into the first half of the double up and then you quickly bank to the left and that'll take you into the final break run so that's basically the layout then you get off the ride you start clapping because everyone's clapping you just gotta do it and you make your way to the exit so is the ride worth a trip to Islands of Adventure? Yes, absolutely. If you've never been before, great. If you have been before, go again, because this ride is so worth it. In my opinion, out of the 58 different roller coasters that I've ridden as of the time of this recording, this is number one. This ride is just so good, and all of the elements are taken at a great pace. The intensity is all there, the rock work and the theming is superb. You just come off getting the entire experience of the ride. And that is something that not every coaster can provide is a full themed experience. And this one does. It provides the thrills, it provides the theme, it provides everything that you want it to. So it is a great ride, definitely worth the trip. And before I wrap up this video, I do wanna mention the light package on this ride. So. Each of the trains has lights on it, bright blue lights, and they'll like flash and do fades and stuff. It looks really cool, but it provides a great kinetic energy at nighttime because with a lot of coasters, they're not lit up at all and they're difficult to see, but this one provides a really unique blue kinetic energy, and I'm a big fan of kinetic energy, just as well as custom music. It provides the atmosphere of the park, which makes it a better overall experience. So that's it. Velocicoaster is number one in the world. There is no arguing. Just kidding. There is. I would love to know your comments. And have you ridden it? Have you not ridden it? What do you look forward to about this ride? Personally, I think you should look forward to that Heartline roll above the water. Terrifying, but so much fun. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. Um, be sure to support it and support me as I continue to make more videos. I would appreciate that. Now, go live an enthused life, and God bless.